Hello everyone, welcome to the GMAT Club Spotlight Fair featuring the top business schools in the world. My name is Gauri and I'm a GMAT Club moderator for today's session. So today we have with us Lauren Sutherland, who is the Associate Admissions Director at the Fukuoka School of Business at Yale University. So before going into and giving it to her, I would like to remind you all to please put in your questions within the chat. Feel free to do that. Uh, Lord will be very happy to take on any of the questions, and uh, yeah, we'll try our best to help you decide uh, your best schools and your best chances within the admission grounds if you're looking to apply this year or next year. So, without further ado, Lauren, over to you. Great, thanks, Corey. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the session for the Duke. University's Fuqua School of Business Daytime MBA Spotlight. Uh, I'm going to be touching on a couple of different topic areas for us today. Uh, the first being the culture and community of Fuqua. Next, I'll give a high-level overview of our daytime MBA program, what our class profile typically is, some highlights about the curriculum and experiential learning at Duke. Next, we'll touch briefly on our career and employment outcomes, what resources we have available, and then I will spend some time talking about the admissions process and providing you insights and tips on the components of the application that we evaluate at Fuqua. So to get us started, um, culture and community is where we feel like the Duke MBA really sets itself apart. We are looking for a new kind of business leader that is looking to use business for good and not just the bottom line. And in order to achieve that, we have some key pillars that we think really makes our community a special place. Uh, the first is our diversity of people. So in the admissions process and for our current students in uh, the student life component of Fuqua, we want to create an environment that allows leaders to learn from people who are really different from themselves. And we're looking for that in the application process so that the classroom experience is a really rich one for our students. Next, we're looking for a diversity of experience. So just like we want to challenge students to be surrounded by people who are different than them, we want different backgrounds coming into the business world and becoming the next generation of business leader. So it's not just students coming from strict business backgrounds that do well at Fuqua. Uh, you can really position any experience that you've had in the past uh, to how it will benefit uh, the MBA program and how it will benefit the business world after you graduate from Fuqua. Next, we value winning the right way. We believe that business should make a difference in the lives of others and should make the community a better place. It is a really important and powerful tool, and we want to make sure that we're equipping leaders who are going to invest in more than the bottom line, like I mentioned earlier. And then next, we want to make sure that we find applicants and individuals who are passionate about moving their team forward. So the community at Fuqua, um, with those key pillars of our culture, really is a special place with engaged students. We have over 60 extracurricular clubs and organizations and encourage all of our students to join uh, at least one club that hits in these buckets, the three buckets that are first on this slide. The first are our professional clubs. So whatever industry you're interested in recruiting in, we have a professional club for that. And you should join that when you get started at Fuqua. They're a great resource alongside of our Career Management Center to help you get to your um, recruiting goals, to your industry goals, and just to make sure that you are as prepared as possible for the recruiting process. Next, we encourage students to join an affinity club or a diversity club. This is where you get to tap into the things about you that make you you before you're a business school student. So whether that is our Association of Women in Business, Fuqua Pride, our Duke Armed Forces Association, or the Black and Latinx MBA organization, or one of our many um, international clubs that students join, um, this allows you to feel like yourself while you are growing and changing and learning uh, as a business school student. Lastly, we encourage you to join an activity or leisure club. So the true extracurricular here, um, 
Business school can be a stressful experience. So academics and recruiting take up a lot of your time, but joining an activity club uh, is a great way to meet classmates from other sections and to learn new skills. So whether that is through our um, running club or triathlon club, the culinary club or the beer club, you may even start another club that you don't see listed uh, as one of our options, but we want you to have fun and to um, have a way to unwind amidst the stressors of business school. And if you are like one of um, our students about the makeup about 20% of every incoming class who are going to be coming to the Duke MBA with a partner or family, you may be interested in our Fuqua Partners student organization. So Fuqua Partners receive student funding just like our other student clubs, but it is, as its name uh, indicates, for partners of current students. And there are different offsets in the Fuqua Partners organization. One focused on Fuqua families. So if you are coming with children, uh, you can, can join up with Fuqua families and make sure that your partner and your family are well supported while you are here on your Duke MBA journey as well. Then the Additional part of our community and culture that I'd like to highlight is our Office of Community Engagement and Inclusion. And this is where um, we really put our diversity principles uh, into action for students while they're here and making sure that the Fuqua community is an inclusive and supportive place for students from all different backgrounds. So this office plans events and activities to make sure we're developing business leaders on the whole and making sure that students are able to um, see themselves here at business school and that there are resources in place to help everyone thrive as well as help everyone grow in their understanding of the DEI space. Uh, and we believe if we're developing business leaders now in the MBA program, then they're going to go out and do really great things to make the business world a more inclusive place to be. So the daytime MBA program at Fuqua, uh, as a high level overview, is two years of study with an internship in between your first and second year. Uh, we think that this experience is more than a two year transaction, but is truly a lifelong transformational experience because your learning and your experience of Fuqua doesn't just stop uh, when you graduate in two years, but you become a member of our alumni network um, and our alums stay really engaged with the Fuqua community and often are coming back to recruit and to help the current students get ready for their next steps, um, as well as staying connected in a social way and making sure that you make those lifelong friendships that are gonna last well beyond the two years that you're here. This is a snapshot of our class of 2023. And um, you can see on the left side of the slide, some quantitative averages, um, our average class size. Uh, this past year was, a four, was at 447. Typically we have a class size between 420 and 440. It was slightly larger due to um, the pandemic. And uh, we were excited to, to be back up to such a large class size this year. Um, the average age of our students is 29 with about six years of work experience. However, that is just an average. So the range of work experience for a full-time program is much broader. And often if you have between two and 12 years of work experience, uh, you can really make a case for why the daytime MBA program is right for you. And even if you're outside of that range, just be sure that you're intentional in your application and your interview in explaining why you want the full-time program. The program at Fuqua is made up of um, core courses, which you will take care of uh, for the most part in the first two terms of your first year, which is a, a typical semester, um, but we call them terms at Fuqua and they're six week terms. Um, so you'll do most of your electives throughout your the beginning of your first year, or excuse me, you'll do most of your core classes during the beginning of your first year, and you'll be able to start into your electives in January of your first year. So you can get some elective courses under your belt before you start your internship in the summer. Most of our students will um, use their electives to work towards one of our concentrations or our certificates or possibly both. Um, you can take 
one concentration or one certificate, two concentrations or two certificates um, and have enough time in your academic program and enough courses to be able to do that. Uh, there are over 100 electives to choose from. And if you are really interested in a long-term Duke experience, you could consider one of our five dual degree programs. When it comes to experiential learning at Fuqua, we think it's important to learn both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And this slide shows some of our most popular experiential learning opportunities. Um, first off is our global academic travel experience. And this is called the GATE program. So this is where you'll study the business, culture, economy, and po politics of a region. And then you get to go and actually travel throughout that country or region and meet with business leaders, alumni, sometimes government leaders to really um, put into practice what you've been learning about that international business experience. Some of our students opt to do a Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum, or FCCP, which is a real consulting project that you'll do for a course of 12 weeks. You'll earn credit for it as if it's a course because it does span two terms, and you will present a deliverable to an actual company that has contracted with Fuqua for our students to solve a business problem for them. So this is great if you are looking to get into consulting or possibly change industries and want to um, get some experience in that industry before you do your internship in between your first and second year. We also have a series of courses for um, those interested in entrepreneurship, and those are our new venture courses that um, work closely with our Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. And then lastly, our Fuqua on Board program is a wonderful way to make a lasting impact on the Durham community after uh, you graduate Fuqua, because this is working on the board of a nonprofit organization in our local community. And Fuqua students serve as non-voting members of the board to get experience and what it's like to be influential in a community organization, and also to help nonprofits um, implement a project or solve a problem that they're facing. And so uh, this is a partnership with our Student Life Office and the Center for the Advancement of Social Entrepreneurship at Fuqua, but is a really great way to use business for good while you are a Fuqua student. Our career and employment statistics are next, and um, I want to talk about the resources that you have available to you while you are a member of the Fuqua community. Um, we have a really robust career management center that will work with you to help you get to your career goals. The CMC Career Management Center, alongside of our professional clubs, um, do a great deal of preparation work with students to get them ready for internship recruiting and re-recruiting if you realize that um, after your internship, you're looking for something different in your full-time job. So um, several of our students do choose to re-recruit um, and the Career Center is there for you first year, second year, as well as an alum. If you need career support, we have alumni career coaches to help you through some of those transitions that you may make uh, three, five, and 10 years after the MBA. Our most recent Career Management Center career report is on the Fuqua website, so you can take a look at that. But a couple of highlights um, are our top industries. So consulting is often king for MBA programs, and um, that is true at Fuqua. We, consulting is our number one industry and has been uh, for several years. On the rise, though, is um, recruiting into the tech industry. So technology is our second most popular industry and is very popular amongst international students who are looking to take advantage of the STEM designation that you can earn on your MBA program at Fuqua. And if you are working in a STEM designated field that alongside of that concentration, allows you additional work authorization in the U.S. So that industry has been on the rise over the last five years, and we expect it to continue to do so. After tech, financial services is our third most popular industry, followed by healthcare, which is another certificate that uh, you can earn at Fuqua and alongside of the resources provided by the Duke University Health System is a really robust um, curriculum and experience that you can have at Fuqua if that's of interest. And then our fifth most popular industry is consumer packaged goods.
Next, I want to highlight a few additional details that can be found in our career report. Um, but starting with our annual base salary at $141,000 um, with the signing bonus that you see below. And 96% of our most recent graduating class had an offer within three months of, it, of graduation. So I'm going to round out the um, presentation today with tips and insights about the admissions process. So we are looking for individuals that have a strong background holistically that we think can really add to the culture and community here at Fuqua. There are six components of our application that we evaluate. So the academics is the first and often the most anxiety laden section of the application for applicants. And um, at Fuqua, we are looking for three things in your academic section, your standardized test score, your undergraduate GPA, and the strength of your undergraduate coursework. Um, for the standardized test, the only component that you can change right now, we accept the GMAT, the GRE, and the executive assessment and truly want you to take the test that is best for you. If you've taken more than one test type, submit them both. And the admissions committee is going to use whichever one helps your candidacy the most. We do not require or accept ESL scores. So if English is not your native language, you do not need to submit a TOEFL or an IELTS score in order to apply at Fuqua. The next component of the application that we evaluate is your work experience. And here we are looking for quality, not quantity. Uh, we are really looking for your management experience of people, projects, or budgets. So when you're reviewing your one page resume, and it should only be one page, uh, make sure that you've highlighted the management experiences that you've had and that you're telling us about your accomplishments and not about your job description. At Fuqua, we also evaluate your leadership and community involvement. And this is a lot more than a byline on your resume for us because we evaluate it um, and it has the same weight as your academics and your work experience. So we really want to see that you've been an involved member of communities that you've been a part of in the past. This is where you can list any involvements you've had in undergrad, um, involvements that you have now, whether that is at work or outside of work, as long as you're not paid to do it, we're interested in knowing what it is that you do and what your involvement is. So volunteer opportunities. If you are on any boards for nonprofits or um, if you're on committees at work that are outside of the scope of your job that show that you care about enhancing your community, tell us about it in this section. For your essays, we're asking for your short-term goals. What do you want to be doing post-MBA and what is your plan B? Just in case um, you change your mind or you need to pivot in your recruiting um, process. And then we have our two long-form essays. One is the 25 random things about you. And we want to know uh, truly 25 things about you. It should be a sophisticated list, uh, more than just your likes and dislikes, but help us get to know you as a person. Um, we don't do very many of the interviews as an admissions committee at Fuqua. So this is our opportunity to get to know applicants outside of their statistics and outside of their work. Um, we really get to get a feel for your personality in this this essay. And then our second long form essay is about how you plan to engage in the Fuqua community. So that's come up multiple times during my presentation. So I hope you see the emphasis on it that community is really important at Fuqua and we're looking for people who will be active and engaged. We evaluate your letters of recommendation and require one letter to be submitted um, through the GMAT common letter of recommendation, but do allow you to submit two if you would prefer. Um, we like for this to come from a current or former supervisor. And if you aren't able to use a supervisor, we ask that you explain that to us in the recommendation section. Finally, we evaluate your interview. Um, all of our interviews this year are being conducted virtually for safety during the pandemic and consistency with different regions of the world. Um, and they may be done by an alum or a student and at times a member of the admissions committee, but all interviews are weighted equally no matter who you interview with. 
So here are our upcoming application deadline dates. So pay close attention to our round two and our round three, which are still um, rounds that are at pl in play at FUPA. And if you are an international applicant, we encourage you to apply no later than round two. Um, we do admit international students in round three, but um, for visa paperwork and processing, it's much easier if you are able to get your admissions decision uh, alongside of our round two applicant. So lastly, be sure to stay connected with us. I'm excited to answer some questions that you have now, um, but also encourage you to join us for future events, to stay in touch with the admissions office, um, and to, to submit your applications for this round. So I'm excited to ask answer some questions that you have now. Thank you so much, Lauren. That was a great presentation. Not only did that give us an insight to the FUCUA admissions, it also told us about how Tum Fukua is woven into the entire fabric of the admissions process and later on during the MBA journey. So with that, uh, our audience has been asking many questions and uh, let me go ahead and uh, take one question. Um, so the first one is, tell us how admission applications have been for round one and what can you recommend for round two and round three applicants? Um, well, we are really lucky at Fuqua to receive a lot of applications from really interesting candidates. And so I think um, people have picked up on the fact that we want your 25 things to really tell us a lot about you. And so I've seen some amazing 25 things essays this round. I've seen a lot of people who are passionate about things like social impact and sustainability and making a difference in their community, which is something that we're looking for in the admissions process. So I would say if you're looking at a round two or round three application, be sure that you are thinking about those things and how you can highlight um, why you are a unique applicant um, and really make sure your personality shines through. Uh, we know that we're gonna receive a lot of applications in rounds two and fewer in round three, but we'll still receive some. And so we do save seats in the class for applicants that are looking at applying in round two or round three. So know that there is still space for you, um, but we really are looking for holistically strong candidates in all of those categories that I, I just mentioned. Yeah, this one is a more specific question. If I recently switched into a new job, how do I decide my recommender? And I think you briefly touched upon that in the presentation as well. Yes, I think if you haven't worked for your current supervisor for very long or you're in a completely new company, it's hard to ask a supervisor for a recommendation, especially if you haven't disclosed your MBA plans. So don't worry if you can't use a current supervisor. It may be best to use your former supervisor if you just start a new role or to consider a client or um, a, a partner in an organization if you're in something that's really specific or unique, uh, like a family business or an entrepreneurship role. So as long as you explain why you're not using your current supervisor, the admissions committee is going to be fine with who you chose. Just be sure to prepare them and um, make sure they have things like your business school resume that you're gonna submit so they can really highlight some of the projects that you are highlighting on your resume. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very helpful. Thank you, Lauren. And uh, before I move on to our last question, I just want to remind our audience that due to limited time, please don't worry if your questions are not being answered right now. You can always join the Zoom session, which is right after this presentation is over. And Lauren will be happy with, along with the team to answer some of your questions. And uh, thank you so much for your time, Lauren. I hope it is very helpful for our audience. And yes, don't forget to join Lauren and her team in the Zoom session. And uh, so, yeah, and also keep watching other presentations. Stay here, stay tuned and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Lauren.